Hey guys, welcome to an intro to perspective tutorial. I've seen some really complicated tutorials out there, so I wanted to try to make it as easy as possible to learn. After watching this, hopefully you'll have a better understanding how to go about studying perspective. So what is perspective? Simply put, it's just the point of view in which we are seeing a scene or object. So before we start with the fancy stuff, we're going to go over some basic terms that will be used throughout this video. The first thing in a perspective scene we need to decide on is where the horizon line is located. What is the horizon line? from this definition by Brigham Young University that I googled. The horizon line refers to a physical slash visual boundary where sky separates from land or water. It is the actual height of the viewer's eyes when looking at an object, interior scene, or exterior scene. Basically, whenever I say horizon line, you just interpret it as the eye level that you're viewing the scene. The other term that's used a lot will be vanishing point. A vanishing point is a point on the horizon where the perspective lines are drawn from. Just pay attention that when you draw the line they're coming from the same point so if you're drawing like this like this that's not okay it should be very exact and make sure the lines are also thin because if they're this big it's a little harder to be precise with them now you can see a grid start to form and this is where we can draw objects on Boxes are commonly used in perspective tutorials because it's easy to show how they recede back in space. When an object is straight in front of us on the perspective grid, we say it goes back in one point perspective. Notice the corners all touch the perspective lines that are coming from the vanishing point. The verticals and the horizontals on the box are straight and the sides of the box recede back to the vanishing point. Here are some other examples of boxes that are also in one point perspective. And now imagine turning this box slightly to the side. The box is now in two point perspective. Two point perspective has two vanishing points. Vanishing point one and vanishing point two. This box, like the previous one, was created by tracing the lines back to the vanishing points. Like in one point perspective, the verticals of the object are straight. However, the sides of the object recede back in space. Now, we'll add another object to this scene, and this is called a skewed object. It's also in two-point perspective, but it's turned at a slightly different angle than the blue object, so it has two different vanishing points, VP3 and VP4. Having objects with different vanishing points in the same image creates a dynamic and more interesting composition. Remember, the vanishing points are all on the same horizon line. And then three-point perspective is when we are viewing the object from a downshot or an upshot. In order to draw this, there must be a third vanishing point above or below the horizon. Three-point perspective can be used to heighten the tension in an image or just to show more information because you're seeing more of an object or scene at once. I generally just stick to using one-point or two-point perspective in my own personal work. And those are the basic terms that you will need to know to understand the rest of the lesson. If these terms are new and unfamiliar to you, this would be a good time to pause the video and go back over the vocabulary that I just mentioned and bring out a piece of paper or a new Photoshop document and practice drawing the boxes in different perspectives. Next, I thought it would be good to go over perspective in photography. This image is great because the perspective is one point and it's very clear where that vanishing point is. You can tell because all the edges of the frame are pointing to it. The vanishing point is right here, and we can figure that out by drawing perspective lines back to the vanishing point. The vanishing point sits on the horizon line always, and we know this is one point perspective because the edges of the frame that are facing us are horizontal. So that means that the objects in the image, the frames, are only vanishing towards one point. Therefore, one point perspective. This image is a great example of two point perspective. Tracing the edges of the carpet, you can figure out that the first vanishing point is over here. So this means that the horizon line is here because the vanishing point must always be on the horizon line. Therefore, after you trace the point from these desks, you can find that the other vanishing point is over here. This is vanishing point number two. One important thing to note is that the vanishing points are located outside of the frame of the image. If the vanishing points are too close to each other, the objects in the image get very distorted and it distracts from the focal point of the image. If that went by too fast for you and you want to go over the PSDs, I included those and other photos you can practice on in my gum road and you can find the link in the description. So number two, we're going to look at how I've used perspective in some of my work. 
So in this image, I drew Hermione holding her cat. Here are the layout roughs that I did in order to choose which composition to draw Hermione in. Each composition uses perspective differently, and in doing so, casts a different emotion on the scene. A is head-on, so we are able to see the emotions on both the cat and Hermione's face, and it's slightly below the horizon line, so we see Hermione's full body on the couch. In B, it's still in one point perspective, but the couch is placed at the horizon line, so we only see the profile of Hermione's body. C is in two point perspective, so we see the side of the couch and Hermione is slightly turned away from us. We only see the cat's face from a back three quarter view. D is in three point perspective. The couch appears larger at the top and appears smaller at the bottom, as do Hermione and the cat. So I didn't choose C because the emotional moment between Hermione and the cat is actually furthest away from us on the edge of the couch, so the cat's expression would be less clear because the cat would be facing away from us. Also, the side of the couch isn't important to the story, so I didn't want to draw it in the picture. In D, the couch becomes so dynamic because of the three-point perspective, it feels like it's another character in the scene, and I really just wanted it to be a kind of relaxed mood. So more often than not, sometimes choosing the simpler perspective is a better way to go. So really for me, it was between A and B. I think either composition could have worked, but personally, I really like fashion, so I wanted to draw and figure out Hermione's outfit, which we could only see from the profile in B. So for me, that's why I went with A as the final composition. Sometimes the easiest solution and the best solution is just to go with what you like to draw. It's easy to tell on a piece of art when you aren't having fun drawing it. So before we talk about how I refined the composition, I just want to explain a quick tip about how to quickly set up a two-point perspective grid in Photoshop. Sometimes drawing out an entire grid and making the vanishing points far away enough from the composition so that they create a believable space is really tedious and takes a long time. So what you can do instead is draw out several lines parallel to each other using the line tool. These will be the perspective lines for one vanishing point. Then use transform, which is control T, and then control click the points and adjust them so that one side of the lines diminish and go back towards a vanishing point. Here in this particular situation, I wanted the horizon line to be around her face area, so I made sure that the, the line closest to her face area was completely horizontal. So if you're completely satisfied with where the perspective lines are, control J to duplicate the layer and then edit, transform, flip horizontal to create a mirror image of the line. For me, I just made this a shortcut, uh, control F. Now just doing control U to change the hue saturation of the new layer. And this new layer are the perspective lines leading to the second vanishing point. The second set of lines will also be on the same horizon line, but we can move it left or right in order to adjust where we want the second vanishing point to be. Hopefully this helps you if you need to get a perspective down quickly for a sketch. Now, let's take a look at how I set up the perspective for the final composition with Hermione. I chose to put the vanishing point in the center of the image so our eyes would be drawn to her. Always keep the focal point in mind when you're placing your vanishing point. Some of the books in the image are skewed, and that means that there are other vanishing points on the horizon line that I used in order to create a more interesting composition. This book has two vanishing points, one over here and one on the side of the image. So while the couch is in one point perspective, some of the books are in two point perspective and this makes the composition more dynamic. Another example of perspective in my portfolio is this, interior layout of a palace. It was really important to me to have a piece that could convey a new perspective because that was the type of job that I was applying for. In this image, I traced two edges of the set back to vanishing point 1, and then I traced the other two edges of the set back to vanishing point 2. I double checked the placement of the second vanishing point by extending the horizon line, because remember, both vanishing points must be on the same horizon line. Now using the second vanishing point as a starting point, I created additional perspective lines, and you can see how I used the second vanishing point to figure out how everything went back into space in that direction. Like the rug across the floor, the couch, the chairs, and the tiling on the floor. 
And this is a little preview of further in the lesson, but I use a perspective rule called the X rule to figure out how the columns receded in space using diagonal lines through the midpoints. This layout is in three-point perspective, and you can tell because the vertical lines in the image slant towards a vanishing point at the bottom. To find this vanishing point, what you can do is draw straight lines using the line tool next to each other. I drew around four or six lines. Then, using Control T, click the two bottom edges of the transform box and bring them closer together. And view the lines until they line up with the vertical elements in your image. For instance, I did this with the columns in this image. One tip that I learned online so you don't have to extend the canvas really far to see the third vanishing point is to use rulers, that's control R to bring them up, and then dragging from those rulers guidelines that mark where the vanishing point is. You will need a vertical guideline and a horizontal guideline to get the coordinates of the vanishing point. And then to double check that the vanishing point is in the right place, using the line tool on a separate layer, extend the perspective lines to the third vanishing point and see if they line up. And I guess above all, don't forget to have fun while you're making these layouts. For instance, you can see I included a screen door, little elements of the sea, and dragon sculptures throughout the piece. So there are ways you can make the layout come alive and have fun while you're doing this. And when you have fun doing a layout, it definitely shows in the final piece. I included some other images I've done in the past in the Gumroad files, so you can trace them over to learn more, or you can choose any other artist online and use their work to trace over. Tracing is a great way to learn, so don't be afraid to do it. Here are some other perspective tips and tricks. For some of the rules, I just made up names so they'd be easier to remember. This one is the tops and bottoms rule. You can see over here is the horizon line, and the objects are all in one point perspective, coming from the same vanishing point to make this point easier to get across. So the rule is, for the objects above the horizon line, the bottoms of the objects are visible. For the items below the horizon line, the tops of the objects are visible. This seems like a really simple rule, but you'd be surprised how many people get this rule wrong when they're just starting out. Another rule that's really helpful is the cylinder rule. This is the horizon line. You can tell that as you get further up in the horizon line, the curves on the cylinder get rounder. But when you're at the horizon line, it's a straight line. And when you go below the horizon line, they get curvier in the opposite direction. And this rule makes it a lot easier to draw through your object. You can see drawing through the circle. In case you don't believe me, here is a picture of Campbell's soup. You can see in the middle the line is flat, and then see as we get further away from the horizon line, the lines get curvier. This becomes very obvious when you look at the text. Notice how the cylinder rule also applies to people. The person, like the cylinder, is an object, and some people think of the human body as a combination of cylinders and boxes. So in this case, you'll notice that the person is standing in a position where their waist is below the horizon line. Like the cylinder, the waist of the person also curves slightly downward. You'll notice that their chest curves upward like the lines on the cylinder. And you'll notice since the arms can move in any direction, they can either be coming forward, which is indicated by this curvature line of a cylinder coming forward at us, or they can be going backward. And this is a kind of a complicated lesson that's more for a human anatomy class, but the cylinder rule helps us to understand the human body. Also, notice how the tops and bottom rule is also coming into play. Because the person's feet are below the horizon line, you can see the top of his feet. Likewise, the person's head is above the horizon line, so we won't be seeing the top of the head. Next up, we have the X rule. The X rule helps you find the center of a rectangle, whether it's flat or in perspective. Let's say I need to draw a cabinet and need to know where to draw the knob. First, you need to draw the bounding box around the drawer. You draw an X from the two corners where the lines meet or where the center of the X is, is where the knob should be built. You can see that the base of the knob is right here, and it extrudes out for the whole knob. Now this one is really useful. This is a tutorial for drawing things equidistant from each other. This involves using the rule we just talked about, the X rule, because we'll use it to find the midpoint of the poles. Let's say that these poles are 20 feet from each other and they're going back in perspective. Where will the third pole go if it needs to be another 20 feet from the second pole? 
what you need to do is first find the midpoint of the first pole. And how you do that is you do control T and it shows you where the midpoint is. Create a line from the vanishing point to the midpoint and you'll notice the perspective line from the vanishing point touches the tops of the poles and it also touches the bottom of the pole. Therefore it will also pass through the midpoint of the poles as well. So what you do is draw a line from the top of the first pole to the midpoint of the second pole and there is the base for your third telephone pole. And that's also how you find the fourth telephone pole and the fifth telephone pole and so on and so on. Notice as the poles go back in space I'm making the line width thinner to show how the poles would get narrower as they went back in space. I've done some drawovers for people who sent me work. Hopefully these drawovers can help you figure out how to improve your perspective work. This is my friend Loco. He's a great character artist and he wants to improve his skills and perspective. So he sent me a drawover of one of Feng Zhu's work. Feng Zhu is an artist who runs Feng Zhu Academy and you should check him out if you're interested in his work. You can see here that Loco drew the horizon line and he has perspective lines going to two vanishing points. You can tell the lines don't converge on the horizon line. So that means the vanishing points are not on the horizon line, which is something that I corrected in the drawover that I did. I suggested that he find the vanishing point one by following the bridge back in space and you know that you're on the right track because you can see some of the lines from the rocks lining up. And also I was just pointing out by finding the vanishing points we can figure out where the bridge ends even if it's cropped out of the composition. Fung probably figured it all out first and then cropped the composition after. Oh, and then I just wanted to tell him that I found vanishing point 3 by drawing the lines from the rocks on the bottom two corners. Those are the ones that are most affected by the perspective, so it's easier starting with them. There was another piece of funks that Loco drew over. It was really great how he found the two vanishing points and identified that there was a third vanishing point at top. I wanted to point out to him in the draw over that the horizon line should not be broken and you have to be very careful when placing the first vanishing point on the horizon line. Also, I wanted to point out what a Dutch angle was and you can read more about my explanation in the Gumroad tutorial. And I'm really proud to share Loco's final round of draw overs that he sent me. He improved so much from the first email exchange we had and I can tell now that he's actively looking for the vanishing points in the pictures and can identify where they are and can also tell where the horizon line is. I'm just really proud of what he did in a couple of days so great job Loco. And then another friend, Carlos, sent me works to draw over via email. Carlos is a really fantastic character animator. So he emailed me these really original stylized layouts that he created. And I just wanted to show him how he could improve a couple of things perspective-wise with the layouts. For instance, the structure in this image has actually two different horizon lines that the perspective lines are pointing back to. We just want to fix this so that they have the same horizon line. So in the drawover, I just corrected where the horizon line should be and made sure that the stairs back in space towards the right vanishing point. Also making sure that the underside of the archway was visible because it's above the horizon line. Over here I just enlarged the size of the laundry hanging to emphasize how the objects get larger in space as they're closer to us. And then I kind of drew over the rock faces to show that they could also show some perspective. Overall, just a really awesome idea and layout. Uh, this was another great image. It was the interior shot with the Statue of Liberty. There were a couple of points that I wanted to address, but overall I thought it was full of a lot of imagination and great ideas. You'll notice that the circles on the torch that Lady Liberty is holding aren't exactly circular. They get kind of sharp around the edges and helps to use the ellipse tool to help you draw through the shape. And also remember because they're going above the horizon line, the ovals must get wider the further they go up. I'm basically just using the ellipse tool and then going to edit stroke which outlines my selection. On the scaffolding on the right, the vertical lines need to go back in space. That means that as they get closer to the center of the image, they need to get closer and closer together. Here they're drawn kind of evenly so it breaks the perspective grid. Then on the bottom left, you'll see that there are a bunch of boxes stacked in front of each other. They're drawn where the width of the boxes is even length as it goes back into space. Not only does this also break the illusion of perspective, but the even 
open spacing is not a good design choice. So a common design thing is to have large, small, and medium shapes. So just make sure that the, the shapes are broken up in an interesting way. So hopefully that helps. And this is the final layout that Carlos sent me. It's my favorite out of all the three because it has the most personality in it. You can tell he had a lot of fun while he was making it. All the wonkiness and the great shape design of the object, it works really well for me. I even loved how he included the process thumbnails so we can see how he made the piece. That's the kind of stuff that you want to include in a visual development portfolio. I just wanted to point out one perspective thing. It's really minimal though because the image is great. You'll notice the cabinet that's holding the drawer is facing towards us. Since the scene is in one point perspective, the cabinet should be facing away from us. I know the scene is very abstract and wonky, but even wonky scenes adhere to a perspective grid because if it's an animation, the characters seem to be able to move around in the space. So just shifting the cabinet the other way should work. And then I just wanted to point out something great that Carlos did in his design. The tablecloth. I love how the outer edges go back to the perspective point, but the inside checkers of the tablecloth, they all kind of do their own wonky thing. And for me, that works really well because as long as the outline of the object goes back into the space, to a certain extent, you have a bit of freedom to play around with the interior shapes of the object. So just great design choice on that. And, and keep an eye out for Carlos's graduation film. It looks great and I can't wait till he releases it. And I just want to emphasize that practice makes perfect. Perspective isn't going to come immediately, but if you keep studying, it will get better and better, and you'll be able to tell when things you draw are off. And you don't need to draw grids all the time, but just, you know, for the first maybe 50 or 30 layout drawings, they'll help you understand what you're doing wrong, and you'll be able to fix your mistakes yourself, which is great because sometimes it's hard to find people to look over your work. Not only can you sketch in Photoshop, but you can also do perspective drawings in the car or in the office when you have a chance. So when I was learning perspective, I would just take out my sketchbook study when I had some free time. And over here, I was, I was just like, honestly, I was at a meeting at work and I was just sketching in the background. You know, just practicing it again and again is really good. So I just wanted to recommend another drawing tutorial by a guy who knows perspective so much better than me. Thomas Romain is a painter and a drawer. He kind of does everything. He works in Japan as in Japanese animation studios and he wrote a really great 21 image plus tutorial about perspective and you should totally check it out. If you just google Thomas Romain perspective tutorial it should be in the first couple of links. I hope you enjoy this tutorial and I hope it encourages you to practice perspective. Check out my art on Instagram and subscribe to my YouTube channel to see more videos. Thanks for watching!